Hi, my name is Michael Shea and I've got an embryology lecture for you today. Actually, I have a series of embryology lectures that I would like to do. I have a wonderful set of German embryo models that's very rare to get hold of and I'm going to send them back to Germany, but before I do, I want to show you them to you. So here we go. What uh, I've got in my hand right here is the egg. And you can see in the egg here that there's an outer portion of the egg right here called the corona radiata. And this corona radiata actually consists of feeder cells. All of these individual little elements here are cells. And if we were to look at a microscopic view, we would see that these feeder cells have actual tubes that go into the cytoplasm of the egg here. So, and that means that nutrition is coming into the egg as well as waste products are going out. And here, in this portion right here, is the genetic material of the egg and it has not been fertilized yet. So we see the three parts, the corona radiata, the feeder cells, we see the cytoplasm of the egg, and we see the genetic material of the egg right here. Now, the egg is perfectly round, and it's a beautiful thing, as you know. Eggs, uh, they're technically called an oocyte, and <clears throat> when the embryo is about five weeks old, 14 million of these eggs differentiate in the ovary of the embryo. And yet, during a woman's lifetime, only 400 eggs are actually ever released from her ovaries. And somewhere in between that five-week post-fertilization period, when those 14 million egg cells differentiate, and when this baby is then born, she is then left with about 100,000 eggs in her ovaries. So there's quite a bit of die-off of the eggs in their phases of development during the embryonic and fetal period of life. Now, you can't have an egg without a sperm, right? So let me show you the sperm. So this is a bit out of proportion because the sperm, of course, is much smaller uh, than the egg. But this is an interesting model. So if we go through this whole piece right here, we can see that right here at the tip of the sperm, uh, called the head of the sperm, this is actually the genetic material of the, of the sperm. And the single sperm, and sometimes two, that actually do get into the egg, once they get into the egg, this propulsion system here, the so-called neck of the sperm, breaks off. And, and right here you can see this propulsion system um, looks like a spring. Very uh, strong, powerful uh, mitochondria, um, energy-driven tail. You can see the end of the tail, and you can even see the piece of string that they put on the end of the tail here. Now, it turns out that there's two kinds of sperm. We have fast swimmers, and we have very slow swimmers. And it's possible in terms of artificial reproduction technology that you could actually choose the gender of the child you want. Because the fast swimmers are going to generate a male baby and the slow swimmers are going to generate uh, a female baby. So there are procedures in which these sperm are separated um, and uh, artificially uh, inseminated into the woman who wants a particular boy baby or a girl baby. So that's the sperm cell and the egg cell. And the last thing you need to know about sperm cells is that they are produced at 1,000 sperm cells every second uh, once a boy reaches adolescence and goes through manhood. So as I stand here, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, there we've got thousands of sperm cells that are already being produced. So thank you. This will end the first part of our embryology talk.